Hi, I'm George, and last year Josh commented on one of our videos suggesting that we have a look at the Mobius Mini 2 camera because uh, we could get much better uh, onboard footage, which we kind of agreed. Uh, our old 808 camera, the number 16 version, uh, as we've been using that for maybe six or seven years now, and so we thought it's probably time for an upgrade. We knew there were better cameras out there, uh, but they were because of their size and also their cost. Um, we kind of been resisting it, but with the Mini 2, it's got much better features and the size is just right. So we finally decided to get one. And there it is. Now, this video isn't a full review of this camera. Uh, there's plenty of those online, so you can go check those out if you like. Uh, this video is more about some of the features that we really like on this camera and how they apply to our rockets and the experiments that we do. So let's have a look at some of those features now. Of course, the first thing we wanted to do is fly it on a rocket. We mounted it to a piece of pet plastic and then taped it in place looking down. Three, two, one, go! Unfortunately, it was a little cloudy on the day and so the colours are a little muted. The image quality is definitely better and the higher frame rate makes it easier to see faster moving action. We will most likely use the 50 frames per second option simply because the rest of the videos are also shot at 50 frames per second. Here is a comparison of the 808 camera and the Mini. And here are a couple of stills captured from the onboard video. You can see that the Mini is a lot sharper, revealing more detail. The rectangular shape makes it very easy to design custom mounting brackets in a CAD and then 3D printing them. The compound oval shape of the 808 was always a paint model and fit with other components and made mounting the camera more difficult. Here we've 3D printed a new camera mount for the Horizon Sustainer nose cone. It just drops into place where the 808 camera was. Which brings us to the next feature. The four mounting holes on the bottom of the camera are a brilliant addition. Again, mounting the 808 was difficult due to its shape as there was nothing really to grab onto. The little adapter plate and screws that came with the camera are also great for attaching it to standard tripod mounts. Though one of the best features we think is the ability to start video recording when external power is applied. This can greatly simplify the rocket arming procedure as simply turning on the system power starts the camera and no separate buttons need to be pressed. This means you can mount it in places where it's difficult to access the buttons. You can also easily power the camera from a bigger battery and not rely on the limited capacity of the internal one. When you cut the external power, recording stops and the file is saved while the camera shuts down properly. The configuration software is quite extensive with a lot of options and it's easy to use. I won't go into all of the settings here, you can explore that further if you decide to buy the camera. I think this software works with a number of other cameras as well. I've left a link in the description where to download it from. Another reason this camera was attractive was its support for 240 frames per second video, though the resolution is only 848 by 480 In this mode the image quality isn't the greatest but it allows us to use the camera for some experiments. Here is a shot from on board the rocket during launch. We hoped it would be a little better, but because the camera is not looking at fast moving action, it really isn't that exciting simply watching the ground move slowly, especially with the lower resolution. I think if we pointed it back at the deployment mechanism or nozzle during flight, that would be more worthwhile. It should be possible to film some onboard experiments in slow motion where we wouldn't be able to fit a bigger camera or something like a GoPro. Another nice feature for experiments is the dual video mode that lets you easily toggle between a couple of different video modes. Perhaps one of them set up to a wide angle view and the other for a narrow view. Or one in HD and the other one for slow motion. With a simple push of a button you can set it to one of the two modes. We are most likely going to use the narrow field of view mode for general use to reduce fisheye distortion and only use the wide angle in specific circumstances where it's needed. So thanks Josh for suggesting the use of this camera. 
So that's our take on the camera. We'll probably only be using it in some of our bigger projects and some of the experiments. Uh, we probably won't fly it on our small rockets at the local park simply because we don't want to get it stuck in a tree. They do cost about a hundred Australian dollars so that would really suck to lose it. Uh, in the next video we're going to have a look at part 23 of the Horizon series where we finish the launcher base um, and then after that we'll start working on the booster itself. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.